Well, hello and welcome everybody. Today on this episode of MCHP, I'm going to explain to you how the scooter transmission works, or a typical scooter transmission, I should say. In another video, I'll explain some symptoms uh, of things that can go wrong with this system, which there are a few. But for the moment, we'll start with simply how they work. Now, most scooter transmissions work in the manner that I'm about to show you, but as always, if you're unsure about something with your particular scooter, please check the manufacturer's specs before doing anything. Now, what we're about to look at is a belt-driven CVT system, which CVT stands for Continuously Variable Transmission or Constant Variable Transmission. What I'm also going to do in this video, which is pretty cool, is I'm going to take the case off, start the vehicle up and show you this system working in real time. So these variations that they're talking about, this constant variable, you're actually going to see that playing out in real time. Now, before we get started, I'm going to start with a very small bit of theory, not much, but just to show you some very basic things so we can understand what we're observing. Does this look familiar? This is a motorcycle chain and sprockets. The front sprocket is connected to the motor, the rear sprocket is connected to the rear wheel. We have a similar system here, but with pulleys and a drive belt. I won't bore you with too much on the theory, as I said, but we have a small sprocket on the front and a big sprocket on the back. The smaller the front sprocket and the bigger the back sprocket, we're going to have what's called low gearing, which is better, it, it produces more torque, so it's better for going up steep hills and things like that. If the front sprocket, however, were bigger, and the rear one smaller, it's going to be geared higher, which can offer better power delivery at higher speeds. So with that said, let's start this scooter up. Okay, so we can see here the rear wheel is moving at idle. Now don't be alarmed, it's because the rear wheel is elevated and there's no resistance from the ground. Ordinarily at idle, the scooter wouldn't be moving, or it shouldn't be anyway. As a demonstration, I'm just going to show you that if I put just a finger on the outer part of the clutch here, and I heavily suggest you don't do this at home, but you'll notice that the rear wheel actually stops because these two components are connected, but I'll explain that a little bit later on. Okay, so now we're going to get some revs into this beast and start increasing the engine speed. Now as you're watching, keep in mind what I said about high and low gearing. You can see this system is doing what the name suggests. It's continuously varying the ratios between the front and rear pulleys. At lower engine speeds, we've got a system that resembles low gearing. At high RPM, we have a system that would work better for higher speeds. And you can see it smoothly transitioning between these changes. So let's dive in and check out how all these components actually work together so that this can occur. Okay, here we've got the various components. We've got the front drive pulley, we've got the driven pulley here, uh, the clutch, this is the clutch housing that it grabs onto, the backing plate which is part of the drive pulley and the rollers which is also part of the drive pulley and the belt. It's a pretty simple system, it works off centrifugal force. So what we're observing there is on the drive pulley at the back series of rollers sit in here and this can spin freely so the rollers sit in like this what's happening as as it's spinning it's spinning at crankshaft speed so controlled by your accelerator these rollers are going to throw out as the acceleration picks up it's going to roll out naturally and the way I like to explain this you would have seen the ride at the fair 
where it's like a UFO and you stand up against the wall and then all of a sudden you'll get sucked up against the wall and sort of start to lift as it spins around really, really fast. It's the same principle here. It's centrifugal force, these rollers roll out and what it's doing is putting pressure on this back plate. So what we're seeing is that moving like that and the front plate assembly there. So what it's doing is it's sort of squeezing the belt. The belt sitting in there, like that. And then as this assembly starts to squeeze, it's going to expand. So at idle, it'll sit like that and then it expands to change the front gear ratio. That's what's happening at the front. At the back, it's quite simple as well. The rear drive pulley is much the same as the front. It's the driven pulley. It, this one does all the work. This one is just driven by whatever's happening at the front. So what we have here is a massive spring in there you can see. That spring's got a lot of pressure on it. So as this belt's being squeezed and pulled in, it's going down the V system here into its own slot. So as I'm pulling over here, because of the rollers throwing out and squeezing the belt, it's pulling the belt down inward. And then as it backs off, it's going to go back, back down. Now that, that spring pressure, as you can see, I've got a wrestle it to get it to sit inward. There's a lot of pressure on that spring. So that's how the driven pulley works. Basically it's doing the opposite of what the front is doing. If the front is sitting in at idle like this, it's going to be up here. If the front is, you know, you've got it fully loaded, you're almost at top speed, it's going to be sitting down in the in the well like that and this part's going to be out. So it's doing the opposite of what's happening at the front. The clutch is a pretty sim simple system as well. You've got, this one has three, they're sort of like brake shoes. The way they work is this part is connected, as I said previously, uh, to the rear wheel. So what these have to do, same thing with centrifugal force, is throw out and grab the surface to turn that. So the way they do that, they've got little springs in here. They're very hard to see. And these springs with centrifugal force throw out. And you can see there's a bit of, bit of movement there. And that's all it takes because it's only just got to go out and grab that to make the rear wheel turn. Okay, so there you have it. That's how a typical scooter transmission works. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up uh, and also subscribe because there'll be more content coming soon. Thank you very much. I'll see you all soon.